Hey, what is up guys? Eric Thane here from Cinema Mastery and today we are looking at the iPhone 13 Pro. So this is Apple's latest iPhone that has just come out uh, a couple weeks ago. And so we're gonna take a look at it today. Now, this is obviously not a huge upgrade to the iPhone lineup. You know, every year isn't always like you know, this massive upgrade to their iPhones. Sometimes they're incremental upgrades, got a little bit better processor, a little bit better screen, uh, you know, a few things going on there. And that's totally fine. However, the big marquee feature of these new phones is, of course, the cameras and especially cinematic mode. And I know everybody's wondering, how does cinematic mode look? What does this mean for the future of filmmaking? What is going on here? How does it work? And uh, I had a lot of you asking me questions about that. And so I'm gonna take a deep dive into the iPhone, specifically cinematic mode today. Give it a test, try it out, see how it looks. How does it compare to other cameras? And let's talk about it a little bit. So here's kind of how it works. When you open up the new iPhone and you go into the camera app, uh, everything pretty much looks about the same, except now when you swipe over to the left, you'll see that there's a new mode called cinematic mode. Now, cinematic mode, once you open it up, you'll notice that it starts immediately tracking the face of your subject. And this is basically where it's tracking, you know, what is it going to be focused on? So in cinematic mode, uh, the iPhone is actually adding like artificial blur to create kind of a faux depth of field effect to make it feel like a lens with a larger aperture so that you can get kind of that more cinematic look with that blurry background that uh, that everybody loves, right? Now, there's a new control here that will allow you to change the exposure of your image. This was typically done before by just tapping on the image and then sliding up and down. But of course, now tapping is actually changing the focus back and forth, and so you can't do that anymore. In addition to being able to change the exposure, you can also change the amount of blurry background look. Okay, you can change the depth of field or this faux depth of field effect. Now, this is pretty cool. You can actually go through here and you can turn it all the way up and all the way down. Uh, it's worth noting here that you're not actually changing the aperture of the lens. Like the aperture is a fixed aperture on these lenses. So you're not really changing it, but you're really changing the amount of simulated aperture, if you will. Now we can put this down really, really low and start to get a really blurry background effect, but you'll notice if you look at the image that you'll start to get a little bit of a halo effect around your subject. And so some of the blurring isn't absolutely perfect. You will start to get some of these effects kind of in different areas. However, for what it is, it's actually pretty cool looking. So now in addition to you know changing the aperture and changing the amount of blurry background, you can also do like simulated focus pulls. So by tapping on another object, you can rack focus from one object to another object and actually change the focus by tapping on it. And then you can tap again to lock onto that subject so that as you move around, it won't change the focus to something else automatically. Now, overall, this is a pretty cool effect. Um, it's actually amazing what you're able to do by changing focus between different things, but it'll be really interesting to see how this holds up in real world use. Another feature of the new iPhone that you didn't have before is now the telephoto lens has been changed rather than a 2X telephoto is now a 3X telephoto and it does work in cinematic mode as well. So you can switch over to the 3X telephoto if you wanna get that longer lens look and then get a closer up shot on your subject. Again, with the blurry background fake effect um, that you can use there. So that's how the cinematic mode works on the new iPhone. It's pretty cool, but let's talk a little bit about like what this actually means. Now, I know the question that everybody's wondering is like, well, is this like a DSLR now? Is it like a mirrorless camera? Is it like a cinema camera? Like, is this gonna be able to replace a cinema camera, right? And you know, I did a video uh, a little while back comparing the iPhone 11 to a red cinema camera. And basically when I put out that video, I kind of came to the conclusion that yes, the iPhone has come a long ways and the cameras are amazing. And especially for what you get for something that's just in your pocket and it's a phone that you can whip out at any time, take a picture, take a video, like it's pretty incredible what you're able to do. But does it really hold up to like a cinema camera, like a red or an airy camera? Not really, like there's a few things that are really holding it back and like it's just not the same level of quality. And you've probably seen videos out there where people are showing off like red footage and iPhone footage and they're like, look, it looks the same. And the reality is that like, if I'm being honest, like their red footage doesn't look good. And so anybody can take like a red image and make it look like an iPhone, but that kind of defeats the whole purpose of this conversation. Like the goal is to make the iPhone look as good as the best possible image you could get out of a red camera. And honestly, it just doesn't really hold up. 
There's a few things that are really holding back the iPhone camera that just make it so that it's not quite up to par with like a cinema camera. So some of those things are like the depth of field, okay? This is a big deal, like the actual blurry background, um, the over sharpness that you get on iPhones that just doesn't really feel natural, the dynamic range, the color rendition, like all of these things just aren't really up to par. Now, most of these things are things that your average person probably aren't gonna notice. And that's totally fine. And like, you know, most people don't know like, oh, this color is not quite right or quite accurate. You know, us filmmakers, we might notice those types of things, but like most people won't. And so they're not really a big deal. But by far the biggest, most important of these attributes is probably the depth of field. And that is what Apple is solving with this iPhone. In fact, changing the depth of field and getting that blurry background bokeh look on a camera is probably one of the quickest hacks to making something look professional or look cinematic. Like it's it's one of the top 10 cinema hacks that I always teach is that if you can just get a blurry background look, like it'll actually go a long ways towards making your work look professional. It's not the only thing. There's obviously way more to it in terms of composition and lighting and camera settings and all these other things that go along with it. But that is one thing that you can do to make your images look more cinematic like pretty quickly. And Apple is now adding that into the iPhone, even though it's maybe a fake effect. Um, it's pretty amazing what it can do and how it can really boost the quality of your videos. So is this new iPhone 13 Pro the end of cinema cameras? No. Is it the beginning of the end of cinema cameras? Maybe. I think what Apple's doing here is actually a really big deal. And the fact that they are building in these features and improving the quality of their cameras over time is, you know, maybe it's not quite there yet, but like I can kind of see where we're going. And the future of this is really exciting to me. So the approach that Apple is taking on these iPhones is what is called computational photography. It is basically like photography and the looks of your photography and the optics and everything created with software rather than the hardware. Obviously the hardware on iPhones is pretty limited. You've got a very small lens, it's got a very small aperture, it's got a very small sensor size, and because of these things, it's really difficult for you to create like a really high quality image. Uh, the iPhone is competing against like really big cameras and really big lenses that use their optics in order to get the look that they get. And so that's the big difference between Apple and other camera companies. While all these other camera companies are using hardware to solve problems and the method of creating a better looking image is to use more hardware, Apple is now doing it with software. And we're obviously seeing like if you look at the examples that the software, you know, it isn't as good as the hardware. Like there's nothing that's gonna replace right now using a Cook lens on an Airy camera and using like the best cameras and lenses in the world to get that look that's just amazing. The software doesn't really compete, but looking at what Apple's been able to do with the software, this being Apple's very first iteration of this software is actually really promising. What if, you know, if you look into the future, what if Apple was able to replicate the look of that hardware? What if they were able to take the look of a, of a Cook lens and perfectly emulate it using software so that your iPhone actually looks like a Cook lens with an airy camera. And imagine being able to change all of that in post. Like, so using software to be able to change the look, change the camera, change the lens, change the depth of field, all of that in post. So you can bring your image into the, your editing software and say, you know what, I want this to look like it was shot on an airy camera. I want it to look like it was shot on a red. I want it to look like it was shot on a Cook lens or an airy master prime or something like that. That is the future that really excites me. Now, are we there currently? No, of course not. But if you consider it that this is Apple's very first iteration of this software, and it's already like as impressive as it is, it's only gonna get better over time. And I really believe that with the advances that are happening in machine learning and artificial intelligence and everything that's going on right now, like there is a future, potentially, hopefully, maybe, where we're able to stop investing in hardware when it comes to cameras and start growing and developing more software. And that's the thing that actually makes them get better and better. So yeah, we're not there yet. And obviously there are some big differences when you look at the footage that where, you know, it's, it's not really that good yet. The roll off is different. The focus shift doesn't look natural. Like some of the sharpness isn't quite right. And so there are some things that you're just not going to get with an iPhone right now that you would get with a more expensive cinema camera. But it's really interesting to look at what the future could hold with cameras like this and where we could be going. So again, like I said earlier, is it the end of cinema cameras? No. Is it the beginning of the end of cinema cameras? Maybe. And honestly, if that's the case and that's the direction that we're going, 
I'm personally all for it. I tend to be a minimalist when it comes to my lighting and my camera work and everything like that. Those of you guys that know me know that. And I just love the idea of having a phone in my pocket that I can whip out anytime that's got professional images on it that I can shoot really quality stuff with. And, you know, maybe in the future that could become a reality where, you know, cameras have gotten so small and uh, even cinema cameras are getting so small that we're able to do things with our iPhones or with smaller cameras like this using computational photography, using software in order to create that look that's actually better than what we're able to achieve with the hardware. I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know that that's the future that we're looking at. Who knows really? But I think looking at it that way and just just kind of exploring the possibility of that is really exciting for me and I think it's super cool. Now obviously being able to be a professional cinematographer and be amazing at your craft is not about the camera that you use, not about the lenses that you use. Like that's why you see like people that are really really amazing cinematographers using cheap cameras and making amazing images. And yet you also see people that don't know what they're doing using an expensive camera and like it doesn't look very good, right? So the real ability to create amazing cinematic images doesn't come down to the camera that you're using or the iPhone or the cinema camera or whatever it is. It really comes down to your skill and your understanding of the principles of cinematography. And so if you're a filmmaker that wants to really learn the, the principles of cinematography, wants to really get better at their craft and really understand how to light and how to compose images and how to create truly cinematic work, I want you to check out the free training that I have down below. There will be a link down in the description it's an hour-long training where I teach the top 10 cinema hacks that will make your images look cinematic uh, automatically. It doesn't require expensive gear. It's all in what you know and how you understand cinematography. So check that out down below. I'll put the link down there. If you guys have questions about this video or thoughts on the iPhone 13 Pro on the cinematic mode and what your thoughts are, feel free to post those down in the comments. I will watch those as well and we'll see you on the next video.